winter. Yes, that time of the year when all you really want to do is curl up under a nice warm blanket and go into hibernation on the sofa, slob in front of the TV, get unfit and eat chocolate, crisps and cake. Mm. No, but seriously, 2020 has been a tough year, with races being cancelled, sporties being postponed, and those big dreams you dreamt of just haven't been able to come true. And that's where we come in. We've teamed up with Wahoo Suff Training in a bid to make 2021 your best year on the bike yet and keep you hungry. Mm. No, Ollie, don't want to hear any more about your eating habits. We want to keep you feeling motivated, fit, healthy, and in hot pursuit of greatness. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Uh. Massive training volume and big rides in the weather like this. Oh, man. get me inside. That's Mana Cafe. Get me my turbo trainer. Oh. So glad to be inside. That's after horrible. That. Well, over the next six weeks, myself and Mana will be following the six week Wahoo Suff Training Transition Plan, which is designed to be the ideal start for your season next year. But what is the transition plan, Ollie? <laughs> I'm glad you asked that, Manon. It combines structured cycling workouts with yoga sessions specifically designed to improve on-bike performance, as well as strength and conditioning and mobility sessions too, to help you rest, recover, recharge and refocus ahead of next year and your cycling goals. Basically the ideal off-season sort of training plan. I've never been so motivated for winter training. I know, me too. Joe, you know, after this, I'm probably going to do an hour record again. Be the perfect launch pad. I'll hold you to that, Ollie. <laughs> Big claim. These plans, they're not any old plans. Oh no, they've been developed by the finest coaches and physiologists at Wahoo Sports Science. These guys, they work with some of the best athletes on the planet. And us. Yeah, don't, don't worry about that. <laughs> anyway, there are two different types of plans. I'm going to be doing the transition down plan, and Ollie, he's going to be doing the transition up plan because, well, he needs a little bit more work. Oh, Come on, slow Ollie. Down. Come on. For God's sake. Keep no. Up. Slow down. We want to invite you guys along to follow the plans with us. It'll certainly help motivate us more, knowing that you're doing it too. And in case you're wondering, the time commitment is only around two and a half to three and a half hours a week. It's a case of a little and often. And a really important thing to point out is that the goal is not to give you PB power outputs at the end of the six weeks. Even the world's best athletes don't try and maintain peak condition all year round. And to do so would likely cause you to burn out physically, but also mentally as well. And the best thing, Ollie, you haven't mentioned, is completely free. What? You can join along for free. Yeah. Right, let's get into a little bit more details about the plans. I don't know about you, Ollie, but I've spent a lot of time on the indoor trainer this year doing e-races, trying to keep myself fit and sane during this very strange time. I also normally like to spend a few hours a week in the gym as I really feel like that benefits me on the bike, but the gyms have been closed and I've lost all my gym gains. I need to start from scratch and the transition down plan is going to be perfect for this. It's the lower volume plan of the two, meaning I'm still going to have time for life stuff too. The transition down plan focuses on active recovery, refocuses on foundational strength and mobility, and it also has some intensity in the latter part of the plan to prepare you for the next stage. And winter, well, it can be pretty grim. Snow, hail, rain. As we've just experienced. Yes, and if you're a fair weather rider like us, you'll be very glad to know all these sessions are done in the indoors, in the warmth. Yes. Personally, Owing to a lack of time trialling or racing this year, I've done very little intensity, much less than I would have ordinarily. I've just kind of been riding around my bike, pottering around, having fun. But I'm ready now for some structure in my life. And I'm going to be doing the transition up plan, which is designed for athletes who are coming up, I'm calling myself an athlete, there, <laughs> who are coming off a period of little or no activity, but are ready to get into a, a, a full training block of structured indoor training. 
The on-the-bike sessions progress from a lower intensity in the early part of the plan to a higher intensity with a significant focus on pedaling efficiency and neuromuscular development. The off-the-bike sessions follow a progression from gentle mobility and stability sessions into functional strength work designed to improve body mechanics, pedaling efficiency and help athletes stay comfortable even after long hours in the saddle. But to find out more, let's chat to head sports scientist and coach Neil Henderson about the rationale behind it. Hi, Neil. Good to see you. Definitely, Ollie. It's well, been, a, been a few hours since your hour. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just just a few, and the world's changed quite a bit since then. But um, just a little bit. You're you're part of, a, of an incredibly well qualified and experienced coaching team. You know, can you tell us? why something like the transition plan, plan is, is important for, for cyclists. Yeah, I'd say we kind of came, uh, came to this transition plan idea in kind of two parts. Number one is people who have been training a lot and even potentially doing some events and races, we do need a little bit of have a, a transition down from a lot of training and kind of shifting gears coming inside. As we know, a lot of times, you know, pro cyclists, you know, they're doing 20, 30 hour weeks, they're doing an immense training load. And, and by the end of the season, like they just shut off and shut down. For somebody who only trains, you know, more like four or five, six, eight, maybe even 10 hours a week, that same like do nothing for a month or so is not necessarily best for their overall health, fitness and performance. And so the transition we have for, for the down is to basically go from a higher level of training to a lower level of training, but addressing some areas that often are neglected during the season. So some of the things that we have with yoga and strength training, mobility to help you be reset and in a good place to then start your next training block is, is kind of what the transition down is. We also have a transition up for those who haven't been really, you know, maybe doing any kind of training or significant or organized training to basically prepare to have a, a more specific training program then beginning and so again this one is going from you know expecting not not having done a lot to getting moving and being ready then to really go forward into your, your preparation for 2021. Nice I mean well, many cyclists you know I think myself included will be interested as to what the sort of actual benefits of strength and yoga sort of are and can be for cyclists so I mean can you, you tell us a bit more about about that? Yeah, you know, when we think about the sport of cycling, it's a pretty like linear and, uh, you know, not terribly dynamic activity in many cases. And so we have these patterns and movement patterns that just get repeated and repeated. And so we're often neglecting different areas of our body that can actually have an impact on just how we feel day to day. You know, if you have kids and being able to pick them up and move around and play and not get hurt because you're so, you know, linear and, and one dimensional. How are the, the yoga sessions and, and strength sessions specifically tailored towards cyclists then exactly so so we have abby carver who has uh done all of our yoga sessions she has you know a phenomenal experience in in yoga and making it more applicable to cyclists and in the kind of movement patterns that we sometimes don't do and so being able to address things within the shoulder and upper body as well as foot and ankle in ways that again you know just riding a bike and in doesn't necessarily address. Uh, something I'm really interested in, Neil, is, is how, you know, did the, the top athletes do it that, that you work with? What sort of transition plan do they do? How is this similar or dissimilar? Uh, there's definitely similarities. For sure, there's some differences, you know, in the kind of load that, you know, like, say, uh, Kasha Niwiadoma ended her season a few weeks ago, and so she took a week completely off the bike, but then started back with hiking, walking, and yoga and did that for a couple of weeks before then adding back in on the she's now on the mountain bike and gravel bike as well as continuing yoga and now we've added strength training into the mix rowan on the other hand he just finished the the giro d'italia he did a pretty big last week there a lot of work helping uh teammates and you know did okay in that final time trial as well after doing all that so he hasn't touched a bike yet but he will be getting back into the gym starting next week to work on strength and stability as the first step before he'll add back into the bike. Rowan's not much of a, a hiker or runner. He uh, doesn't do those things as much, but he'll get back on to the, the bike then after typically about three weeks, uh, but he'll be in the gym before that and moving, getting that strength and stability foundation to prepare for 2021 already. Right, well, I, I guess uh, myself and Manon, but I get cracking. 
Why does the plan include yoga, Ollie? Oh, well, I'm glad you asked that, Manon. See, core strength and flexibility are really important in cycling. And I've done a fair bit of yoga in the past, and I found it was really useful in helping me get a lower, more aerodynamic position on the bike, but also be able to maintain that faster position for longer. You do look pretty arrow, sir. Do I? Yeah. Oh, thanks. Nice. How about now? Even better. Oh, so aero right now. Amazing. Yoga is something that many pro athletes integrate into their training as it helps improve strength, flexibility and helps avoid injury. This is something that I am really excited to include in my training as I've never done it before, but I have been told I should. So I'm looking forward to seeing how it benefits me on the bike. The plan also includes strength sessions, which is going to be good for Ollie because he might be able to keep up with me then. Stop, stop doing that. Oh, and just another thing. All right, Columbo. We're both going to be starting off with the half Monty fitness test. Now, don't worry, this isn't to see if your numbers improve, but it's to set the appropriate workout target numbers. So we aren't training too easy or too hard. Yeah, and both versions of the transition plan culminate in us doing the SUF 4DP test, which is an incredibly comprehensive fitness test that determines your full power profile so that it can then tailor all sort of fitness targets and interval intensities in the Sufferfest app when you do them in the future. I've never done one of those before. <laughs> You'll enjoy that, yeah. Something to look forward to, Manon. <laughs> okay. You're probably thinking, where do I sign up? This sounds awesome. Well, we're going to leave a link in the description below. It will take you straight through to the Wahoo Suff training app. And ordinarily, when you sign up to the Sufferfest, you get 14 days completely free. But if you use the code TRANSITION30, you'll get an additional 30 days on top of that. So you get the whole six weeks for free? Yeah. Brilliant, isn't it? I love a bargain. Well, we're going to begin the plans on the 1st of November, so make sure you sign up by then so that you can join in with us. There's going to be updates weekly in the GCN show, as well as uh, posting all the workouts we do on Strava as well. And we'll be doing some longer form, more in detail videos as well. Can't wait. Right. Excited. See you later. We better crack on, man. Yeah, get back before the rain. Bye.